welcome back to Under Pressure Podcast, your favorite business building podcast for the pressure washing industry. Uh, I'm your host, Jake Aronson, and with me today is Greg Brooks of Rocket Station. Greg, it's so nice to have you here today. Yeah, Jake, thanks so much for, uh, for having us. It's been a little while since we've connected and seen each other, but appreciate you uh, having us on the pod. Absolutely. I've been very excited to have uh, Greg on this podcast because uh, a while ago, Greg and I did a podcast in the home inspection space on the Inspection Pros podcast, and it was just a very valuable episode to really talk about process development, staffing, and, and scaling, and, and how Greg um, can share his expertise, but also how his company, Rocket Station, can help you with that. So let's talk today. First, I want to introduce Greg. For those of you who don't know Greg uh, in this space, Greg is uh, for coming here today from Rocket Station, which I have worked personally with. I've met Greg at a bunch of events, and Greg is the National Director of Business Development at Rocket Station. So, Greg, is it true that your expertise is really in process development and staffing? Is that true? Yeah, we get to touch all the unsexy stuff that entrepreneurs <laughs> kind of wake up and kind of grit their teeth and just kind of try to get through every single day. So really what process development and, and virtual staffing means is it's really twofold for us. Number one, you know, I'm sure your listeners out there, a lot of them, they're working as much on their businesses as they are working in it, meaning mm -hmm. pressure washing themselves out there in the truck all day long, trying to get some work done at night or on the weekends, or maybe they've got a spouse or family friend doing it. What we help our clients do is create a process-driven business, meaning whether it's how you schedule you know, a, a power wash, whether it's how you onboard a new client, whether it's how you run your marketing, you know, what separates the local power washer from somebody who's got 20 employees, 50 employees, works in multiple states, really isn't how you deliver the work. It's in how you how you employ, how you staff, and how you develop processes around each function of your business. So what we help our clients do, because as an entrepreneur, there's never enough hours in the day, is yeah. get that business out of their head, right? Help build SOP, standard operating procedures, really standardize everything that they do from the day they get up until the end of the week, till they process payroll and document systems that can then be handed off to future employees um, to help them scale and better maximize their time. And then we double down with, we also happen to have 2,200 employees based in the Philippines who provide a virtual but super scalable, very affordable, very talented staffing resource to then plug into those processes that most of our entrepreneurial clients realize, yeah, that's important for the business to do, but not important for the president, the CEO, the owner to be doing it day to day. Absolutely. So I'm very excited to get into the VA conversation because uh, I'm sure that there might be a lot of pressure washers out there who haven't heard of VAs and don't even know that they have the ability to use them to their advantage. So I have uh, I have experience with with VAs now. I've seen it. I've spoken to you, and I have gone out to to many events and spoken about it with pressure washers who maybe hadn't heard of it or had had heard of it and not tried it. And it's something that you know the tide is turning in the conversation of all these industries where you hear, oh, it's now breaking out into this industry or that industry. I know it's huge in home inspection, and now I think people are just starting to hear about it in pressure washing. So I'm very excited to get into that today. But first, let's start off with um, you know the process development and the staffing. Let's get into that a little bit. If someone, I think our last episode actually, and I'm going to double check on this, was um, all about getting your business up to the point where you can sell it. And this episode might not have aired yet, so that'll air at some point. So with the the current environment of the economy, a lot of people are going to be looking at acquiring other businesses or maybe selling their businesses if they're an owner operator. So when you talk about selling a business, do you think your process is the most valuable part of your business or is it just the key element you have to focus on? Yeah, no, that's a great question. I think your process is your business. And, and mm -hmm. I kind of draw it back to one of my first so I say jobs. One of the first companies I owned fresh out of college was uh, a friend of mine, a fraternity brother. We bought a, a, a restaurant, a bar and grill. And we learned very quickly there's a lot, there's a big difference in being self employed 
Mm -hmm. and owning a business. And what I mean by that is when you're self-employed, you're the firefighter. You wake up every day, you're the center of that web. It doesn't matter if it's your director of operations or if it's your, if it's your bartender or if it's your chef, any decision being made is coming through you. Mm -hmm. And that's all well and good when you're, you know, 25 years old and you got a bit of an ego and you, you think it's cool, but very quickly as a business owner, that wears itself out to where you just don't have the physical capacity to, to, to do it or to answer it, or you dread walking into your own business every day. Um, so I think for me process, that is the difference between a solo operator who's self-employed and somebody who has a legitimate business that they can mm -hmm. hand over to someone, sell, put on the market be vetted by outside investors. And we're seeing a lot of our clients do the same thing where they're looking to diversify and go into other sectors of the home service world. Well, the thing that puts the companies that they acquire at the top of that pack is not only do they have a massive book of business or great marketing channels, but in terms of how they operate, it's a process driven setup. And it's not just a great entrepreneur that does a ton of work every day to, to you know, get into the next day or get the job done. Absolutely. So not just selling your business. I'm sure also you have a lot of experience with people growing their business rapidly when they start to focus on process development. So do you have any stories or, or um, experiences with the vast amount of companies you worked with where you see them really work on honing in their processes and then seeing that pay dividends? Yeah, definitely. I think especially, you know, during the last few years where we're coming out of a COVID world, we all kind of were virtual assistants. And obviously for pressure washers, a lot of it has always been on the go. But, you know, a lot of these industries were traditional brick and mortar. Um, one of my favorite stories is one of our clients, they're a property management company based out of Louisville. They manage about 5,000 doors. So a good sized company that'd be classified as mid-sized. And they had gotten to the point where they, they had 76 employees, which for a company of that size, that many doors is about twice the amount that you would want. And it kind of, once they did an internal evaluation, they realized like any time a problem came up, the first answer, if there wasn't enough hours in the day to do this, or the phone was ringing here, or they weren't getting to their clients or customers, the first response was always, let's hire somebody. Mm -hmm. And then you just ended up with all these people who were there to help and nobody knew what they needed to do, how they needed to do it who they reported into. And it just created inefficiencies and created really a lack of control for that, that um, executive as they kind of went through this evaluation and realized, you know, they did have some good people, but they, they had a lot of bottom feeders as well that were kind of holding back their company, taking the next step, um, next step as well. So the, the thing that's great about working with our clients as intimately as, as we do is we kind of get to see both sides. When people start talking processes and systems, it's usually for two reasons. Either A, their overhead is costing them so much money that they can't figure out why. Why do we need so many people to run my business when my colleague down the road is operating a profitable business and going on vacations and he doesn't seem to be struggling the way I am? Mm -hmm. Or the second part is they're preparing for huge growth and they're mm -hmm. trying to set up systems and processes so that when their business doubles in 12 months or triples in 36 months, they will be able to still operate efficiently. And, the, and most importantly, the customer experience, the customer interaction won't, won't suffer and won't lack. Yeah. So if someone's listening to this and says, you know what, Greg, you're right. I'm ready for massive growth. Where do I start with my process? If someone really is just an owner operator and is really um, inexperienced with creating these processes and, and hasn't developed the processes, where do they start? You have so much experience. I'd love to get your take on where are the most important parts to focus on process first. Yeah, no, definitely. I think the most important question always is why. I'm a big, for those, a book I'd recommend for anybody out there, Simon Sinek, Start With Why. Um, I think any, whether you're talking about a hire or whether you're talking about evaluating your current staff, the first question you've got to ask is why is this person here? And not in a negative way, but like what is the intention around their job? Like why are they coming in here and, and why is our company have that position within our org chart? So that's always the, the best place because from there you can start creating simple checklists around the core responsibilities that each role should be in charge of. And, and I guarantee you what 90% of our clients find as we go through this exercise is you're going to find a lot of people doing a lot of stuff that you're not paying them to do, that they've stepped in and, and really stepped up for your company, but it's, it's things that, that might not be in their skill set or things that are outside the scope of work that might be slowing down your business, business growth 
that, that you, quite frankly, as a business owner, don't want them to be doing. So I think why, you know, why is each position? Why is each person here? Um, and then the next step is jumping into what? What are they doing day to day? And there's many different ways of doing this. It can be kind of side by side shadowing, ride alongs. It can be series of meetings. But you've got to understand, like, where is their time being allocated? What are they doing each day? What software are they doing it in? You know, what does their daily flow look like? So that you can have a really deep, deep understanding as to how your company right now, without making any changes, is operating because that's the first step within process development. We, so, we've all owned businesses, right? So migrating people into new processes is a lot harder than looking at what we do now and refining those and making them more efficient. So it's really like starting, starting with an inventory. Do inventory, but not on product, on human resources. Yes, exactly. It all comes down to time, right? We all got the same 24. So you got to understand where those 24 hours um, are being spent in regards to your business and that person's scope of work for sure. Absolutely. So we're going to take a quick moment to hear a word from our sponsor, Pair Payments, but we will be right back with more staffing questions, uh, process development, and then we're going to get into VAs. We'll be right back. You certainly can't afford to give profit away for no reason. But what if I told you credit card processors may be overcharging you and robbing you of profits you've worked hard to earn? It's time to put an end to being overcharged for payment processing. It's time to take back your profits. That's why we've put together a free report, How to Avoid Being Overcharged by Your Payment Processor. Head over to TakeBackYourProfits.com, download the report, and put an end to being overcharged for credit card processing. You've worked hard for your sales, and you deserve to keep it. What are you waiting for? Go to TakeBackYourProfits.com and download your report today. All right, and we are back with Greg Brooks of Rocket Station, who's here to answer a lot of our questions about process development, staffing, and VAs today. So we did talk a lot about uh, process development, and now I want to go down into staffing a little bit more. So when we talk about process development, we're talking about doing it for specific reasons. And like we just said, if you're growing your business and that's the first thing you want to focus on, that's a great way to grow at scale um, and, and really be able to add rocket fuel into your business. But I want to know, Greg, from you, a lot of people have, have trouble while they're growing with staffing. So have you seen any anyone I'm sure there's no one with the silver bullet but have you seen you know any experiences or stories of of people who maybe struggled to be able to staff their company before but once they nailed down the processes it was a lot easier to staff their company and they were able to find that success faster and it's all just feeding into each other like a cycle yeah no definitely we work with someone in the in the general contracting space and I'm sure, obviously, being in the contracting space, you know, for, for all the, the, the pressure washers out there, you guys understand between subs, between your own guys, W2s, 1099s, like it's a lot, right? And it's, un, un, for most people, business really isn't that hard. People always tend to be the hardest part of it. So I think like right now, like, so this, this, this client um, in, in particular, they were struggling on two, two, two sides of it. Number one, finding contractors, laborers, in this crazy labor market that we're in right now, it just seems harder than ever. Um, you know, you're balancing the, the raise in prices that you need to demand out of your customers with the raise in wages that all of these, these subs are, are, are looking for, all the contractors are looking for. So at the end of the day, you need the talent. You got to get the work done, right? In the service industry, like there's work to be done, whether it's fixing an HVAC, whether it's, you know, pressure washing a, 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 a commercial building, like the work's got to get done or you don't have a business. So, so this client kind of took a, a completely different tact and different approach. Um, they went very heavy on their marketing budget in terms of recruiting as a kind of like a vocational program. They set up a, an online using, um, you know, like an online hub and portal for training, offered side-by-side -side learning, all paid, getting people into the industry and just getting excitement, going for a much younger avatar, you know, a, a 22 to 28-year-old, but really trying to, you know, tap a little bit less on the experienced people, but relying on their quality guys to educate and be teachers and setting themselves up for staffing success for mm -hmm. five, 10, 15 years, rather than just jumping in and trying to solve the immediate need, which obviously they had as well. Um, so, so I, the reason I bring that up is I really like that example of putting your like great people in 
great positions to be A players, right? We've all got great people within our organizations. And a lot of the times we wear them out, overwork them, ask too much of them just because they are so great at their job, right? There's, I'm from the corporate world. So like the big joke was is like, <laughs> hey, you don't ever want to be the best. You want to be like the fifth best because yep. then you don't get any more work, right? You're just, yep, I get my same quotas every year. I have to hit my same sales numbers. Like I'm good. It's the guys that are first that a lot more is asked of them. So I, I thought it was really interesting. And then what this client did on the other side was they looked at, at kind of coming back to process, looked at how they operated everything in the back office and in the business. They knew they were going to need to hire and train and pay guys a little bit more. They knew that they could reflect some of that in their costs of, of doing work, but they know that they needed to find some margin as well in their back office so that they could stay profitable. So they looked at they, they used an outsourcing partner for their accounting department, for all their billing, for all their vendor invoicing. They utilize our service um, and our virtual assistants to save about 67% on what they would normally pay a customer service rep or a salesperson or uh, even just a scheduling person. So they were very creative in saying, hey, what's the most important thing to our business? It was getting the work done and having guys in the field. And then they looked at all the other departments to figure out innovative ways that they could save money either through outsourcing, through virtual assistance, or even through just slimming down some of their internal operating staff. Absolutely. All right. I'm glad you brought that up because I was going to ask about profit margin uh, when you started getting into that. But one question I have now is, what is the flip side of that coin? Just because we love stories here and, you know, any story that someone can learn of what not to do so they can cut down on their own learning curve and their business's journey. I want to know on the flip side of that coin, if someone decides to hire and they want to scale and now and they don't have the process down or, or it's incorrect or their process development is just really lacking. Have you seen any companies who have really flopped in their hiring process because they don't have the processes down? So it's just very inefficient. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, we have, we have stories of people that have come in and use our services. I mean, even just from my own personal experience, as I mentioned earlier, like that restaurant example, I mean, we ended up just selling and it was something that could have been great that we were like, just get us out of here. This is the biggest headache ever not dealing with it. So I, I do think, like I said, it all comes back down to the process. If there's mm -hmm. not intention, having, having conversations around like, okay, we want to pay our contractors X amount more and we're going to tweak this process or reallocate these resources on the back end. If you don't have process to begin with, like you're not going to be able to do it. That's why really having that holistic understanding of how you guys operate, where you can be efficient, where you can look for other solutions is where it makes it a lot easier for you to do that pivot, right? We're all used to the kind of the tech world now where it's like move fast and break things. Well, that's every industry. It's just a crazy time. Doesn't matter if you're, you know, a pressure washer, a plumber, a property manager, a, a doctor. I mean, everything's changing. Telehealth, like you've got to be able to very quickly evaluate what you're doing now, what's going wrong, mm -hmm. and then be able to be the strategic voice in your, in your, in your organization or in your company to pivot and change and try something else. And what I will say is the biggest thing that processes lend to is it not only gives you efficiency in terms of how your teams operate, but it also gives you really good benchmarks to where you can understand when something's broken, right? Mm -hmm. If, if you have a process in place, you have the ability to evaluate it, measurement, measure it. There's an expectation. I'm a big football guy. So it's like, if you don't have the playbook and you run we're in Dallas, you run the Cowboys offense and Dak Prescott out there on the field and he throws an interception. It's like, whose fault is that? There's no playbook. There's no route. Was it the receiver? Was it the corner made a good coverage? Like Absolutely. there's no way to, to gauge it. So if you don't have that playbook for your company, what's going to happen? How do you evaluate? And what you're doing here is you're kind of connecting some dots and some things you, you said prior for me, which is, um, you know, that company you said in the story where they switched their avatar to the, the perfect person they're looking for, their ideal uh, team member hire is younger. You said like maybe mid 20s. What that shows to me is that they had a, a shift of, all right, let's have our processes down. This is how we do it. And then let's get someone who can then execute that stuff. They don't have to do it their way. It seems to me like you, you have a lot of people in industries like this, maybe not just the pressure washing industry, where if someone wants to add team members, they're looking for someone who's done it for 10, 15 years. And you're hiring them because they know how to do it and they do it their way. And you don't have to teach them or you don't have to have the process. So it's kind of a crutch in that sense, right? Where this way, you can, if you really have the process built out, you can add someone young, some young talent with a lot of energy that they can then learn to do it the way that, that you want to do it up to your standards of your company. Is that is that the difference there of the process and not? Yeah, you, I mean, you nailed it on the head there, right? Like that's, I mean, as every business owner, that's the real reason we put 
seven years of experience or 10, like it's not the fact that, you know, yes, there's certain executive positions at big companies where like, yeah, they need to be able to understand that. But for most small to mid-sized businesses, which is all of our clients, it's everything I've ever worked in. You put experience because you don't want to train them or you don't have the capability or the bandwidth or someone on the team to train them. So yeah, you're exactly right. That company, when they shifted or, you know, shifted to hire younger to put guys in the field, they spent a bunch of time and resources building out, you know, online training, making sure that they understood everything their guys did in the field. How do you do it? What are the best practices? Being able to transfer that knowledge from one brain to another is training. That's the hardest part. It's the most cost costly part of anybody's business. So being very systematic and, and process driven around that, it really helps you you know, be able to make those hires and make those shifts like that. And then what I'll say on the other side, it also protects you, right? Because I'm not going to say that company came in, hired 20, 26 year olds, and they were off and running. There were guys that didn't work out, guys that didn't make it through the training, but all the time invested in those guys didn't walk out the door if and when they quit or when they got fired because the knowledge is a document. It's all there where anybody can, can tap in and be able to use it. So it gave them a lot of flexibility to take chances on people because they weren't worried, well, hey, I'm going to go waste six months on this guy and he's not going to get it. They, were, they had a system in place that made that very process driven. You know, for, for the listeners out there that are in the military, I mean, it's that business model, right? It's that, that way of being process driven. There's a way you tie your shoes. There's a way you, tuck, you, know, you make your bed every single day. It's having that same level of precision in everything you do is really what separates and allows companies to make, make pivots like that during these, you know, these crazy times that, that we're experiencing now. Absolutely. So it's clear, I'm sure, to anyone in the audience today that that you have a great understanding of this and you are an expert, absolutely, in the process development and the staffing. And now I'm sure um, I'm sure the question everyone is wondering is where do VAs fit into this Um, as a company is looking to scale, develop their process and and kind of feed that cycle so they can grow the right way or grow uh, with a strong foundation. Where do VAs fit into this puzzle? I know the answer, but I want to hear um, from you, you know, where do VAs fit into this? And then maybe even for someone who doesn't know, you could start us off. uh, What is a VA and what does Rocket Station do? But I'm, I'm wondering where do VAs fit into this? Definitely. So, so VAs are, are better known as virtual assistants are basically any remote team member, meaning somebody who doesn't come into your office every single day. Right. And that obviously that definition has changed a lot over the last couple of years. Um, but it can be somebody who, li- who, who lives in another town in your state. It can be somebody who lives across state lines. It can be like our company, someone who lives halfway around the world in the Philippines. So it's really any, any worker that's fully remote, who can plug into a very specific process, a very specific role within your company. So what we're seeing and what I would say for, for anybody kind of interested in, in, in more information, our website's rocketstation.com. We've got lots of information on processes as well as, you know, what is virtual staffing there. But basically it's, it's, it's process driven back office support. Meaning once you have these processes in place, you as the entrepreneur will very quickly realize, number one, there's very little things that you need to be doing and that probably 85, 90% of what you do every single day is the same thing. Rinse, wash, and repeat, right? There's a specific way that we schedule an appointment. There's a specific way we start a new marketing campaign. There's a specific way we, we send an MPS score or do a customer survey after we've been out to the site. Once you start to see that, then as long as you do the work on the phone or on the computer, you have limitless options in terms of tapping into virtual assistance or taking that work virtual in general. So for some, some listeners, that might mean, hey, I live in New York. It's, it's going to cost me seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 to hire a, you know, a young person with limited experience to work in my office, or I can outsource the work to somebody in Boise who I can pipe all my phones to, who they can work in my client management software, and it's only going to cost me $50,000 a year. For other clients, they might be looking to, to have even more efficiency and for roles that are very time conducive but aren't super revenue generating high dollar tasks, mm-hmm. they can do what our business does and look overseas and take a position that you would normally need to pay 25 30 bucks an hour to and outsource it for $10 an hour. So it's really being able to maximize whether it's just different domestic workforces where costs of living are lower or look overseas, you know, being able to plug virtual assistance into your business because a lot of what entrepreneurs struggle with is the stuff that always bogs them down, both from a profit standpoint 
as well as from a time standpoint, is usually the non-revenue generating type activities. And those are the ones that we're, us at Rocket Station, but, but VAs in general, are very good at finding and plugging into very clearly defined processes and having them execute it, saving you a bunch of money while still getting way better, very consistent results. So I love the idea of it because like in the economic uh, concept of it, it would be arbitrage, right? It's classic arbitrage. You're, you're going to get something where it's less somewhere else and you're using it where it's of higher value, right? So I, I've gone around to a lot of events where I've spoken to people about scaling recently. I'm sure if you're listening, um, you've seen me at some events or come check out the huge conference. We'll be there very soon. This episode will probably air before the huge conference. If not, hope I saw you there at the huge conference. But I've been evangelizing these uh, these VAs in, in the system for a while now because I have experience with them. I uh, was in a meeting with two of our VAs today. We have uh, two VAs that, that are fantastic. I have, if you if anyone wants to be on this podcast and you reach out to me to schedule, you'll be scheduling with a VA who's absolutely fantastic. And one thing I really see is the opportunity um, to to take a business, con- uh, like business growth, right? This is something that should really eat away at profit margin. If you're trying to be in a really growth, big growth phase, you might be hiring and there might be times where you're less, where the profit's less, but this is a way to, to really add to your team while still being cost conscious, right? And to a certain degree, I, I don't want to make it sound like it's like, I don't want to make it sound like a, a low cost option because of the high value of it. Like it's, it is really hard to kind of articulate, yeah. um, you know, how the, how the whole thing works. But what I will say is I just think it come talk to me at events, uh, any, any pressure washers who is, is thinking about growing with VAs, because let me tell you, this is a way to get someone who who is highly skilled, can do everything that you think only you can do and really give you time to work on your business and not just in it. You talk to people all over the country. I'm sure you've talked to a million people, Greg, who say, oh, but no one can do this better than me. This is why our business works, because only I can do this. And let's be real, you got into pressure washing because you were really good at pressure washing, and then you found out, hey, maybe there's a couple other team team members that can do it as well, so now you have three pressure washers in your team or four in your team. And so it's the same with, it can't just be you uh, booking calls, calling leads to book those appointments. And in pressure washing, that's where I see the biggest opportunity for someone to have VAs in is, you know, scheduling appointments, maybe, maybe growth division as well. If you need sales, if someone's going to be cold calling or calling warm leads or just calling any leads in general or anything with your business that you're doing day to day, like Greg had said, you're doing over and over again. It's something that can be turned into a process and then you can have someone do it um, at a lower cost because that's relative to your time. If you're the owner operator and you're doing um, work that can be, you know, subbed out to someone else at a fraction of the cost, it's crazy not to do it because your time is yeah. so valuable. Greg, you've said it a couple times on the podcast now that everyone's got the same 24 hours, right? Yeah, so exactly. You can't be pressure washing and answering the phones well, that's, and doing everything. And the, yeah, and that's and that's the example we always give. It's like how many times have I mean we're all spending money on Facebook and Instagram and Google AdWords and all the different marketing channels that are out there. Like how many times have you had to shut down the machine so you could answer the phone? Because if you're one like me and you carry multiple cell phones, the sales cell phone ha- called and you know that, Hey, well you're spending $65 a lead just to have that phone ring. So you got to pick it up and answer. Right. And then who's remembering to follow up with that person? How are we mm. scheduling it? Is it seem like all those touch points where it can be, it's very process driven Candidly, a lot of the times when you utilize VAs, your customer experience scores go up, your Yelp reviews, your Google sure. reviews go way up because you're number one, you're not missing those calls. Or when you say, hey, I'll get you a quote tonight, you're getting them the quote even faster than that. Right? That's the biggest relief like we hear from you know, our actual clients is it's like, hey, I thought I had to do it because I was the only one that did it right. But when you document the right way from the entrepreneur and then couple it with a well-trained VA – who, who can really be plugged in anywhere, everybody wins. You win, you get time back in your pocket, focus on the business, go on a vacation, mm-hmm. f- find investors for the business if you're looking to sell. Whatever your outcome is, you get more time back in your pocket to do that. 
but you also have the bandwidth to grow or to handle growth, right? Especially in the marketing side, a lot of people right now are trying to figure out marketing the channels, Facebook's, you know, Facebook's not working the way it used to. My Google AdWords aren't working the way it used to. We're spending a lot of money because we got to keep calls and new clients coming in. But what I tell people is like, that's all good, but marketing is not sales. So if Mm -hmm. you're, if somebody's, if your Google AdWords hit and somebody clicks on your ad and gives you a call or sends you an email, but you don't respond to it within 30 minutes or you don't answer that call on the first, on the first ring, they're just going to scroll on Google and go to the next person whose Google AdWords are working. And then there you go. You just lost a 200, 500, $10,000 job simply because you were there doing, you know, doing something else, trying to run your business and you, you missed the opportunity, right? Amazon's brought this kind of instant gratification customer to us. Yeah. Well, now we've got to accommodate and VAs and the scalability of them is a great way to have a business that's able to accommodate everything, but keep your overhead and keep your cost way, 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 way down compared to you know what the traditional model was of hire someone locally and put them in an office. Yeah, let's be real. You're optimizing everything because I love what you said at the beginning of there, which is like that the, the level of service is going to increase and that's not just speed too. I think that there's a lot of skill that these VAs have and I've been highly impressed. I think that if you're a pressure washer and you're looking to scale your business and you end up trying out a VA, I think you're going to be shocked that not only can they do it as well as you, I think they might be doing a lot of aspects of the business that you were doing better than you and that'll help you take your business to the next level faster. Uh, but what you just said there, doing it at, at a lower cost and and it's just crazy to me that you can really utilize something like a VA to optimize everything. You're now somehow doing things at a higher standard while also then doing it at a lower cost. It's yeah, just, it's not, it's not the norm, right? It's not it, usually that you're like, Hey, I'm going to buy something cheaper and it's going to be better than the more expensive thing. But that, that is what we're talking about, right? At the end of the day, we all have budgets. We know that to hire this position, we can pay this amount per hour. Well, now if you can hire someone who has the skill sets of this amount per hour, that's 10, 12, $20 more, but they just happen to live halfway around the world where it's cheaper to live and you get someone who's more qualified, everybody wins there, right? It's, it's a very unique world. It's, it's something that I've say still to this day, I'm learning a lot about after being in it now for almost five years, but it's something that I just feel like every small to mid-sized business owner should be, should be leveraging in their business in some capacity, if not to save themselves money on their overhead or to offset skills that they just don't have like marketing, like sales, like Mm -hmm. scheduling, like accounting, you know, find, find a reason to give this a try. Because like I said, I just seen all the success stories of so many of our clients who have been able to accomplish 10 years worth of goals in two, just because the business owner themselves has that little bit extra time back in their pocket to, to focus on the business instead of being the guy always working in it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Just like E-Myth, uh, j- just like the book E-Myth, I love the fact that you know a lot of people really like the technician work. Then they get in, they make it a business because they want to do it all the time. And now they end up as a business owner, but they don't know how to run a business. So this is just a great way to jumpstart that. Or if you're already past that level, take your business to the next level uh, in, in what I think is a super efficient and optimal way. So Greg, I got to know, because I'm sure that there's going to be a lot of interest after this podcast, where can people find you? How do people find out information on Rocket Station? If someone has questions, where do they go? Yeah, definitely. So rocketstation.com is our website for anyone looking to have like a one-on-one call, say we can talk processes, we can talk virtual staffing. Um, My personal calendar is discovery.rocketstation.com, discovery.rocketstation.com. We'd love to carve out 30 minutes and learn a little bit more about your business. Um, and then we've got some great resources as well, Jake, on, on our website. So if you're, if the idea of process mapping tickles you, if you know, you've been looking at a VA, maybe done some interviews, not sure if it's the right step, we'd say even if you don't want to talk to somebody one-on-one, we've got lots of great resources on our website um, to kind of give you the how-to book if you want to try it yourself or dabble in it um, to be able to plug, plug in there quickly and be able to, be able to give, give virtual staffing and, and process mapping a try. Absolutely. So thank you so much, Greg, for doing that, for for sharing that information, for telling us where to find you. And I have to say to the audience, again, if you have questions about VAs, uh, I love talking about this so much that you can reach out to me as well. Come find me at an event. Ask me about this because I would love for this to get picked up in the pressure washing industry. I think this is this is something that's going to take the industry uh, to the next level, raise the standard for everyone. So 
again, thank you so much, Greg. Thank you for joining us today. It was a pleasure. Pleasure having yeah. you. Thank you, my friend. Always good. Hopefully we'll, uh, we'll cross paths here pretty soon. Appreciate your time. Absolutely. I will see you soon, Greg. And to the audience, I will see you next week. But please do me a favor, like, subscribe, and share these podcasts. If you know anyone looking to grow their pressure washing business, please give this podcast a share. It's not often that you get the business side of the industry where we can bring in these experts. I'm so happy to be able to bring in experts in the industry who can share their advice and insights on how to grow your business. Um, and not just work on the technical aspects of it. So thank you so much again, Greg. Thank you to the audience, and we will see you next week. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and smash that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the bell so you won't miss our next episode. This episode was produced by Jake Aronson. This has been a Pair Payments production.